and welcome to the J Train Podcast. J Train, Jared Freed, coming to you live from the quarantine cabin on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We are here every Monday and Thursday with your emails, your stories, your questions. I say it every episode. Let me say it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for telling a friend. Thank you for coming out to shows. You're doing it, people. You're doing it, Peter. What's that from? Hook? Yeah, you're doing it. So listen, I appreciate you. You're telling people. You're spreading the word. You're making your Instagram stories. You got to keep doing that. That's how we keep the J train rolling along. You guys are the are the 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 coal that I scoop into the engine of the J train. That's right. So you got to keep telling a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa, anyone with ears will take them. I'm on the road. Those of you who have come to shows, thank you. It's been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. Raleigh, you are a pleasure. Um, you know, I, where, where else have I been? Oh, Worcester and Royersford. Oh, my God. what a pl- Those were a lot of fun. Uh, I'm coming to Kansas City Mo, Kansas City, Missouri. Come on out. Halloween, baby. Let's celebrate in a socially distant way. I'm coming on out. Get the group chat together, your corn squad. <laughs> jaredfree.com for tickets. Also, I'm doing Patreon. I I love what's going on on Patreon. I'm doing three extra podcasts a week. That's right. On Wednesday, I do Luxury Lounge. I complain about one luxury issue that no one would allow you to complain about. Friday, I do one more email, which is a longer email um, that I would never do on this podcast. And then Sundays is Coffee with J-Train. That's me. little sip on the cup. And just clearing out that brain. Just it is that's my favorite podcast to do of the week. People who are Patreon subscribers know that I, that is really where I get personal, where I get touching, where I try to be funny, as in with all of these podcasts. So patreon.com slash Jared Free to sign up. It's five dollars a month for three extra podcasts per week. That's a lot of talk. So go on out there. Get on Patreon.com slash Jared Freed. Very excited about today. Oh, also, um, was there another thing? No, I think that's it. So, oh, Hasbrook Heights I'm coming to in New Jersey. Very excited about today's guest. An OKP on the show, original key player. Hilarious comic. Nimesh Patel, thank you for coming back, buddy. Jared, thank you for having me. The busiest man in Hollywood. That's right. My <laughs> ma- that's right. That- Jared Hollywood Free. That's what everyone calls me. <laughs> Nimesh, you if you what's that? I was gonna say, I was gonna say you just started another uh, Patreon podcast, uh, sleeping with Jared, and it's just recording eight hours of the noises you make when you're sleeping. Just me <laughs> in bed. And yeah. listen, you get to have that experience too. Oh, also the Bachelorette. That was the thing. I, I the live scream. So that's wow. uh, the Bachelorette is every every Tuesday. We're we're screaming, and I'm doing the Rose rehash on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see Nimesh with quite a setup. I I love what what is going on in the back. A picture of yourself in this the background. A, this is the the hope poster that I had redone. To say, ha ha. <laughs> is that a t? Do you sell that T-shirt? Is that a T-shirt? Uh, no, it's not. I should. I'm gonna. I should do something with it uh, uh, for Patel 2020. Uh, but <laughs> the, right now, it's just I wanted a poster of me. <laughs> it legitimately looks like it's like an over-the-shoulder shot on like Colbert Report, or like uh, The Daily Show. Yeah, my friend uh, Jesse Reyes did it a long time ago, um, and it's a uh, it's a beautiful rendition of Shepard Fairey. I think Shepard Fairey would be proud that this is this FedEx printout is <laughs> at my apartment <laughs> It looks it looks right on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you can take a look. So, what's going on, Nimesh? How you been? We spoke. I think it was. The last time you were on this show, it was Memorial Day weekend, I think, when we taped. Was that the last time you were on this show? I don't know. Every time uh, is like the first time, Jared. I know, right. So what's going on <laughs> with you? You got you got shows. You're putting together a stand-up special, and everyone can go 
watch all your YouTube stuff that has been mm-hmm. blowing up and doing great and so funny. Patel2020.com, Patel2020.com. What else you got going? You got other, you have a cartoon. I didn't know you as a cartoonist. Oh, man, I didn't know me as a cartoonist either. But uh, (laughs) my friend Mookie and I have been working on this cartoon for, I want to say, nine months. Uh, I can only say that it's called Zoo Idiots, and I do voices in it, which I didn't know I I I was a voiceover artist, but uh, I play... uh, You'll, you'll see who I am in the show. So you are you have a good voice, I would think, for voiceover. I would think so, too. So it's about time I learned how to do it. It's such a skill. It is a skill because I thought – I remember I've sent in in the past vo- – there's a voiceover world. And yeah. there are some people that like – like the guy who was in um, Star Wars is like James the – James Earl vo- Jones? No, no, no. Well, James Earl Jones, another voiceover guy. But like uh-huh. – um, less credited is, or less known is Mark Hamill. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I know him as an actor, but I don't know him as a voiceover guy. He, what does he, do? he is um, the voice of like um, all these different cars, uh, the Joker. Really? In like DC Universe, like in the nice. cartoon. Um, it's like he is like a known voiceover guy. Uh, he's known for the Joker, Luke Skywalker, and Skips, and, and he's like a big voiceover guy. And these people, like you, what you realize is it's the greatest job in the world because you show up to a soundstage and you just go uh, check one, two, and then you become whatever it is, like your zoo idiots character. It's so much fun once you figure out how to do it. I'm not saying I figured it all out by any means. I'm a novice at the very at, at best, but. Like first, first the business side of it, it's like it's e- it's not easy money, but it is like the the return on what you're doing feels the greatest because literally I, I could go into the mini sound booth I've created in my closet over here, just yeah. record a bunch of shit, and it would almost be professional quality to the point where you could use it. You know, I'm sh- I'm sure someone in the voiceover thing. world like. That's the thing where you say it's like it's easy money. It's like you have to get in. Oh yeah. And then and that that I would assume is hard, but then once you're in like the the you don't even leave the house. Like this is going to be great. You could just set up a nice little sounds thing in your fucking closet and make, you know, I don't know how many you know, the top guys get thousands and thousands of dollars an hour, but uh that's I mean the reason I did the voiceover stuff, A, it was this is a good sample for voiceover stuff, but more like I wanted to see if I could act on cartoon. And, uh, so what's the, what's the premise of Zoo Idiots, the cartoon? What can you tell people? Uh, what can I say? It's about, um, it, it's, let's say an animal farm were to be written and turned into a cartoon and uh, adapted in, a, in a, a very loose way. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it is. Um, okay. You know, this is not, we're not, we didn't try to uh, make South Park. We mm-hmm. wanted to, although that was a, obviously that would be a dream uh, to have it in the same realm, uh, but more like if Animal Farm were a cartoon and our, our take on what's going on in the world, what would it be? Um, and that's it right now. So listen, people, go to Patel2020.com. You can see Zoo Idiots will hopefully be there by whenever it gets there, but also... You can go find all of Nimesh's YouTube stuff, which is fantastic and great. And he's going to be taping a special in D.C. soon. So you go to Patel2020.com. Go right now. Go check it out. Put it on your favorites. And, you know, keep checking in there because you're going to find cartoons. You're going to find the YouTube. The YouTube has been going great, though. That, that's yeah. That's uh, where it's at. The cartoon will come out probably mid-November, uh, early to mid-November. But... Uh, there's plenty of stand up and shit to keep you busy until then. I mean, I put my hour out in March. Yeah. Uh, the last one that I did. And, uh, uh, I guess like during quarantine, people were looking for shit on YouTube. And, uh, luckily my the algorithm, all, all praise to the algorithm. Uh, <laughs> our call, new God, call, our yeah. new, re- <laughs> our new religion is the algorithm. The algorithm. I feel like those, the, the aliens and 
Toy Story, whenever the algorithm hits you, it's like, oh, you know? <laughs> Dude, I, I know it because, like, I've been doing, you know, I, I, I've been tinkering with TikTok. I, I love a TikTok. Yeah. And um, now Reels on Instagram, you can tell Instagram, like, wants Reels to be a competitor. Yeah. So I've taken a lot of my TikToks and, like, shortened them down for Reels. Mm-hmm. And they do... Uh, like a thousand times better than like they're the ones really? that like you you can tell like it's just like oh I'm getting new people out of this it, it's as if like it was a refresh mm-hmm. on Instagram for putting out content and, and but it's like you know it's it's funny that like I was talking to my brother yesterday you have to become a social media manager as well as a comedian like yeah it's it's uh we have to wear a lot of hats. It gets frustrating because you're like, all I want to do is be funny, but I'm spending time on, yeah. hey, what hashtag should I use? And it's like, that's not funny at all. That's been the biggest uh, con, if I were going to put something in the con pro, con column of yeah. becoming a, a YouTuber, so to speak, is like actually doing it. Like the work, yeah. involved, it's still work until you were at a point where you can have a team do everything. Um, and that's the dream. But it's also up, up until that point. It's like I gotta, gotta take this, clip you gotta this be, up. Yeah, you gotta be funny, an editor, a hashtagger, a right time of dayer, and then you gotta like, and then be funny again. Like it's like it's right. uh, and and funny is a job at a certain. You know, all you want to do is put your concentration in the thing that you're good at, and that's uh, that becomes tough. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, I I've appreciated learning all the new things that I've learned. Mm. Um, you know. You know the stuff that goes into designing a successful video versus what doesn't, and all, and, and that's even. I, I'm not even good at that. I'm just saying I, I've, I've started to learn about it, and there, uh, and you become you like respect it. You're like, oh, there are people that are good at this. Yeah, I mean, uh, doing a joke on stage about how TikTok is a job and a lucrative one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it. It, when you start it, when you look at it, you're like, oh, this shit is a joke. What the fuck? And then you try to do it, and you're like, this is hard work. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a girl on, or woman, I'm not really sure how old she is, but mm-hmm. she's on TikTok, and she's very pretty. She looks like Ariana Grande, mm-hmm. and she does a lot of, like, videos that, like, you can tell brings men in. Like there, mm-hmm. you know, she's changing her hair. She's doing sexy songs and all this stuff. I'm uh, sure she's. I, I'm positive she's of age. I mean, I'm saying, but she's like a dance TikTok. But like, there was. But she does amazing, talented editing work. Like, yeah, the stuff she'll she'll take her head off of her shoulders and she'll and and so the other day I'm watching on TikTok. She comes up on my screen, mm-hmm. and I recognize her because she's one of these people that's huge now. Yeah. And someone r- responds, you have no talent. Mm. And you know how you can respond to a comment on TikTok? So she has the comment above her head, you have no talent from a an asshole. Right. So th- she then does a whole dance where she bites the comment um. and then it's in her mouth as a piece of paper. And you're like, oh, it was like the most amazing mind right. fuck. And I was like, she just she blew you up, you fucking idiot! Like she's right. got amazing talent. Like it, it's like, it's just amazing the way like it's like yeah she brought you in because you thought she was good looking and now you're bringing her down because you're mad that she's more talented at this than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's I'm like shitting on teenagers, but I'm like, come on, man, tell me how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to have you here now, Nimesh. Everyone, go to Nimesh. Find- at Finding Nimesh on Instagram. It's going to be all over my social media. Patel2020.com. Patel2020.com. Go to the website. Go right now. Go check it out. It's all just stuff to make you laugh. Patel2020.com. Let's start Please. the emails. You ready? Always. I've been waiting. Let's do it. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. JTrainPodcast at gmail.com. Dating a creeper. Jared. Mm-hmm. So I started talking to this guy in quarantine back in May through a dating app. At first, I had a weird first impression since he kept pushing to meet up in quarantine, even though I kept saying I didn't feel comfortable. He then told me that he bought my parents a present and he has never met them before. He was all he also was telling me that he wanted to date me before we even met, which I also thought was cute, but maybe a little too soon. 
Then he bugged me enough to meet up, and we eventually did in June. When I'm with him, I don't see him as creepy, but just someone who is very different than people I've dated in the past. Very chivalrous, sweet, and caring. A month later, he started adding all my friends on social media and messaging them weekly. I think he just really wants to get to know my friends, but some friends find it weird. He mainly just talks to my friends about their personal lives on social media. We see each other weekly now that we are official, and and when I'm with him, I don't find that he is creepy or weird. He is just very into me. Should I find this creepy or weird? Submitting for a friend. Hmm, What do you think of this? I think this is the plot to the season three of You. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, what? this is too much. And Your parents are present. Yeah. I don't like any of this. No. And we just, you know, the joke about you, that's a joke, but that also, we're in serious territory because I, I, I just think if, if it's. If it walks like a duck, tucks like a duck, duck, yeah. it's it's a duck. Where there's smoke, there's this guy burning your house down because you said yeah. no to him for something. <laughs> yeah, I don't you know? I don't like any of this. There's a natural process of getting to know someone. Right. And when you go outside of that natural process, it's for a few reasons. You're trying to deceive someone. You're trying you're you're they're in the nineteen fifties. <laughs> yeah, you're you're low you're low in confidence. Yeah, right. I mean, adding someone's all of someone's friends on Facebook a month after dating and then messaging them weekly is like, what? who is this person? This is all too much, and and maybe you know also the emailer is saying that when I'm with him, it feels good. He's just super into me. It's nice to have someone into you, but yeah. you, that doesn't mean push aside all the weirdness that he's doing otherwise. And like, I would ask someone like this to stop what he's doing. Yeah. Hey, this this makes me feel uncomfortable. You've messaged my friends, but I'm still trying to get to know you. I, you know, like, why are you doing this? Like, I like, and if someone can't answer to this or back away, then they have ulterior motives that I aren't they- safe. They just moved to town. <laughs> even uh, even even just moved to town too much is too much too soon. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like they are randomly in town for some reason they can't explain, and their last relationship ended because uh, she was a bitch and she moved really far away. <laughs> yeah, good luck ending it with this guy. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Like, I I I I think you're talking to two men. Uh-huh. right now and this is a female writing in and submitting for a friend so it sounds like this might be a friend of hers that has been messaged by this guy and finds it weird and wants us to say yeah, yeah it's fucking weird and i'm not saying it because she wants us to say it i'm saying it because all of this is fucking weird it's very and strange. and you know, we can joke around all day about like you know the ex disappeared and like all mm-hmm. that stuff but like the reason we're making this joke and thinking this way is because he's reminding us of someone that we've seen in a Netflix story about people <laughs> yeah. disappearing. So, yep, this is so, a true crime written all over. The the problem is it's like sometimes someone's insecurities and someone's issues um play to your own insecurities. Like I'm sure the person that he's pursuing is like no one's ever given me attention like this. Right. And 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 so they're going, I do love having attention from the opposite sex that I've never had before. So who cares that he that that he's messaged my parents and told them that he's waiting outside their kitchen door? You know, like who cares? But it's like, no, no, no. no. That's you what have it's to, supposed to be. No, it's not that at all. It's not supposed to be that way. <laughs> and you have to tell your friend, because they said submitting for a friend. This person has to be told you will find someone that treats you right while not being weird. Yeah. Like they probably think, well, I don't want to give up this, this, you know, I don't want, it's like when someone's like, it's like when someone's like getting money from someone. Well, I don't want to give up this. You'll get the money elsewhere. Like you'll find it elsewhere. It feels like a, a Costanza type move, just really enmeshing themselves into the person they're dating the whole life so that if it ends uh they'll be 
completely devastating, you know? Like, yes. Just trying as many webs as possible. Yeah. And the process is, I, I mean, listen, the person listening might like you. I'm, this email scares me. Mm. I'm saying that right now. Like all the details. He 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 bought a gift for my parents. He told all my friends. He's talking to my friends. He's friending them on social media. He um he's and they find it weird. So like we're all telling you, and I and I know it's hard to listen to when you're like, but I have love. I have affection. No, you'll get it in another way. This person and so the process goes like this. You need to tell your friends and family what's going on. Do not keep this person a secret from anyone because I would treat them seriously as mm -hmm. someone who is trying to deceive you. Mm -hmm. Two, I would say to this person, hey, I want you to back off from my friends and family. That stuff is weird to me and makes me feel uncomfortable. If you want to date me, you have to get to that point and deserve those introductions. You don't just get them because we're because we've seen each other. Then if he won't listen to those things, you got to end it and you got to let friends and family know you're ending it because this needs to be public. You need to uh, let the community protect, right? Mm -hmm. J train podcast at gmail.com J train podcast at gmail.com. Can't wait to see that Netflix series. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> I, I hope she's okay. I, I, I really flat. do. Uh, let's do what should I do? Jared, huge fan of your podcast and Instagram. So I've been in a little bit of a rut lately with my boyfriend of three years, and I'm not sure what I should do. He recently told me that marriage won't be on his mind until he finishes school and starts his career, which will be in about nine years. We are 27 years old. He mentioned that he doesn't know what could ha happen in the future, but knows for sure he doesn't want to even be engaged before the nine years. I don't mind waiting that long unless it's certain that we'll be engaged, but who knows? I don't see myself with anyone else other than him, but it's hard when I see all my friends and family getting engaged and married and having kids already, and I'll be the last one to do all that. Not to mention my friends have had a lot to say about, the, about his quote-unquote rule, too. It's also possible he will be relocated due to work for the next nine years, but that hasn't been decided yet. I feel like our relationship is one big question mark, and I'm not sure if this is really a huge deal breaker. Please let me know if you think it should be. Nimesh, what do you think? Well, that's a tough one because it sounds like the guy is looking for a reason to end it. I thought the same exact thing. You know, I, I thought that it's just not say it. He's but they've been together three years. He doesn't know how to get out. You know, he's basically making this. <laughs> it's funny that he's like, I'm not going to get married for nine years. And she's like, I'll wait as long as I got to <laughs> know we'll get engaged. He's like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he was like, and how do you feel about this? And then yeah. she's like, oh, I'll wait. No, don't wait, lady. And then he probably did the thing where he's like, you want to wait till you're 36 years old to get married? And she's like, well, you're the right person. I love you so much. And he's like, God damn it. Doesn't she hear what the fuck I'm saying? <laughs> I bet it's th this guy is just getting master's degree after master's degree. After. <laughs> God damn uh, it. <laughs> I, surprise, I picked up a minor today. <laughs> Oh my! He's just delaying it. He's gonna. This is gonna be the most accredited man <laughs> on the planet, just trying to avoid getting married to this girl. <laughs> yeah, this guy is the next. Like he's gonna be like, like the next. Like um, like he's like I'm a three time professor. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, this MD, is uh, MBA, PhD, BA, MPL. <laughs> the funny part is that we both thought the same thing because I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my first thought was this guy is trying um, he's trying to build up enough garbage that you'll leave the house and get yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. like he's become he's turning himself and because it's with you know an MBA or his post you know you're this person emailing in is probably like well he's doing he he gets to still look like a good guy because he's yeah. like no I'm improving my life I'm going to have a career from this education and it's like yeah. And I, I don't like, I think her perspective is off. I think she's like, she's sitting here being like, well, 
I don't see myself with anyone other than him. But it's you need to start seeing yourself with someone other than him. Yeah, but I mean, when you've been with someone since you were 24, which is like mm-hmm. your prime dating time, uh, it's hard to imagine yourself with someone else because your prime dating time has only been this person. Uh, yeah. But that's like almost, the only way you're going to see yourself with someone else is if you do it uh, and be with someone else. And then you realize I mean, it's not that hard. The fact that like she needs to take control of her own dating life a little bit more. She needs to. I mean, not to speak. Listen, we spoke to him. We think that he is giving her a million reasons to dump him. Yeah. Um, but to speak to her, she says. Um, he mentioned that he doesn't know when that could happen in the future, but knows for sure he doesn't want to even get engaged before nine years. I don't mind waiting. You do mind waiting. You're yeah. emailing. You, you you need to admit you do mind waiting. You're emailing the J Train podcast, going, <laughs> "Well, I don't know what to do. I just as long as he assures me." And at like you're 27, you're in the prime of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say 36 is old, but he's saying to you. At 36, then we can begin to discuss the engagement process. You don't want that. And that's okay. <laughs> you need to let, you, you know, you need to find someone who does want that. And I, I think you got to look seriously at ending this thing. And, and again, he might, let's say he's not doing what Nimesh and I are saying. Like, let's say, <laughs> let's say he's a saint. Let's say he's a saint. He wants he wants to become the doctor of all doctors and the head of chief of surgery at Mount Sinai. Or he's or he's you know a rabbi and he can't get married until whatever, whatever the rules are. Whatever it is, let's say that he is being honest and he's not saying this just to get you to dump him. Right. Um, the fact that you're just like that you're uh, taking away all of your taste is a problem. Mm-hmm. You you know a I um like I'm looking to get married and get engaged and have these things happen. Oh, I am too. But my rule is once I'm done with school, and it's like, well, you you know, there's no I I I have this belief that when people have these rules, when mm-hmm. people give out rules or when people have rules, it's to I it, it's a in a way to like get what they want. Oh yeah, it, it's just a way to to make the situation in their favor so that if so, if so then it, rules are meant to be broken but if you set them people are like oh but that's his rule therefore i can't violate it's like well that's a dumb rule <laughs> yeah. so yeah i think this lady just needs to uh hoe around for a while and uh and then she could start seeing herself with someone else and you know yeah. come to the realization that you know it, it, it's a lot of it's like you don't want to believe that the other person wants to end it and yeah. and you just don't know what and you know that what they're saying is ridiculous but you want to believe whatever lie they're telling you well also you don't want to believe that they are just willing to let this go right like that that's the big thing like let's i again when i was saying take him at his word mm-hmm. then you need to say okay that's fine for you but i need to have my life move on in the yeah. same way in the same way that you want your life to move on to a career in i would assume medicine if this is uh the postgraduate you know yeah, thing nine taken, years yeah nine years um so if you want your life to move on in that way i need my life to be good and and worth it too so i'm going to move on from you and say hey this was nice i'm happy to have the experience of dating you but we have to break up now he may look at that and go, well, that's not what I wanted because he might just be comfortable right now. Mm-hmm. He might just be looking at this going, well, she still sucks my dick. I can still not, you know, I don't have to spend a lot of money. I don't have to worry about kids. And mm-hmm. then you walk away and he goes, oh, shit. I liked her more than I was even willing to admit. I wanted to keep her more than I. I'm not saying count on that, but I'm just saying the only way you get to know that is by leaving and, and ending this. You got to be prepared for both possibilities and okay with both of them and then uh and then see if he was really uh uh telling the truth about his nine years thing (laughs) i want to know how that plays out (laughs) we are sponsored people the j train podcast is brought to you by bespoke 
post this fall as you get back into the swing of things. Bespoke Post has brand new seasonal box of awesome collections for guys guaranteed to upgrade your life. Listen, people, this is a new sponsor. I love that this is the time of year Bespoke Post is getting involved with J-Train because, listen, we're all looking for gifts for dad, the boyfriend, someone in your life, and these are... They're called the Box of Awesome, and it's different. It's it, it's. Listen, we have other box companies that sponsor this show, and what I always say to you is these boxes are an opportunity. They have things in them that you might not get for yourself. That's why it's called a Box of Awesome because you would walk by in the store and go, yeah, that does look pretty awesome, and then you think about your life and you don't think you're good enough to get those things. But Bespoke Post gets us out of our own head. It gets you out of your head of like, what do I get for dad or my uncle or my boyfriend or my brother? This is an opportunity, whether it's gear to upgrade your autumn craft beers or cozy threads for when the temperature dips. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month, no matter what you're into. Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to bar bar barware, Barwar, barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear. Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. Listen, if you if you're dealing with a boyfriend or girlfriend, pick a box that you know. Do do the quiz for you. Take it like your your boyfriend or your brother or your dad. That's fun. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. So we know the deal. You get a box, you go through it like you're a raccoon going through the garbage can, and you find something in there that becomes a part of your life. And the rest of it is pretty great, too. Get 20, 20, 20. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. That's boxofawesome.com. Enter code JTRAIN, JTRAIN, JTRAIN. 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter code JTRAIN at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code JTRAIN for 20% off your first box. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Hello Tushy. It's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. Imagine jumping in the shower and not turning on the water, just wiping your body with dry paper. People would call you crazy. So why wipe with dry toilet paper instead of washing with water? For years, bidets have been available but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. Now there's Hello Tushy. People, I will say this. I have Hello Tushy. It has changed my whole bathroom experience. I am right now, I'm currently sitting in a hotel room, and it makes me upset to be away from the Hello Tushy. Yeah, I'm, I'm upset to leave you know, my girlfriend and the, the people I love in my life, but mostly it's the Hello Tushy that I'm thinking about because every time I go to the bathroom, it is an unbelievable experience with the Hello Tushy, and it has ruined me for every experience away from the Hello Tushy. It is, and also saves you time, saves you money, makes you feel better. What there's, you know, yeah? Did you say, Jared? Did you say save me money? Yes, I'm using less toilet paper than I've ever used in my entire life. You're gonna be helping the planet too. This is a win, 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 win. I don't know what you're doing. Come on. The Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize the blessing bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. Hello Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for just $79. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80, 80, 80%. So Hello Tushy Bidets pays for itself in a few months. That is true. Listen. Go to if if you use Amazon, you can do the math right now. Go go look through it. Go look at how much you've spent on toilet paper, and now cut it by eighty percent. There's money in your pocket. You're welcome. But we're also going to give you some free money towards a Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com/jtrain. Go to hellotushy.com slash jtrain to get 10, 10, 10, 10 percent off. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash jtrain for 10 percent off. That's hellotushy.com slash jtrain for 10 percent off. Jtrain podcast at gmail.com. Jtrain podcast at gmail.com. Here with Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh. Go to patel2020.com for all his YouTube stuff. 
Zoo Idiots cartoon is coming. It might already be up. We don't even know. No, it's coming later. So yes. tell2020.com. When do I tell her about my fucked up family situation? Mm. Jared, feather, feather. Starting reading your stuff way back in your TFM days, followed you to PGP. And then a few months ago during quarantine, a friend told me about your podcast and I've been listening ever since. Also, I don't think you've had a question quite like this one before and it's going to be a little heavy. So just a heads up. Hi, hit the bell, people. It's a heavy email. Ding. I, I lost my mom to cancer when I was young, 12, and then all four grandparents at different times throughout high school. My dad got unexpectedly sick when I was 25. I'm 29 now. And we ultimately had to make the decision to take him off life support, which means my only family is a younger brother, younger sister, and a stepmom. We're close, but she's not a parent. Because of this, I'm generally pretty guarded emotionally, and it has definitely started to interfere in my relationships. I just don't know how or when to bring this up. I start. I just started seeing a girl that I really like. She's the girl you get a text from, and your friends know it's her because you get that stupid smile on your face without realizing it. How do I bring up my family situation without it being like I'm dumping all of my emotional baggage on her too early, but also not too late? I've told friends in the past, but I hate the thought of anyone treating me differently than anyone else just because of my past. We've all got our demons, and I don't want mine to define me or how people treat me. Keep doing what you're doing. So, Nimesh, this is a – I really appreciate this email. Let me first start by saying that. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand – the. I, I don't understand because that's not my life, but I empathize. Um, this is a tough situation. What do you think? I think, first of all, that uh, uh, this person is quite honest with uh, how they're feeling with you. They should be as honest with someone they're going to be dating. Uh, you yeah. know, this is like, you know, the biggest part of your life. This whole the, the situation is your it's the biggest part of your life. And I, I don't know, you know, beyond what you said, uh, um, if there's anything necessarily to be ashamed of, ashamed of, obviously it's tragic and sad. And, uh, you know, it really defines, it can really, you know, impact you beyond, you know, our comprehension. But, uh, that said, like, if it's the biggest thing in your life, then you should be willing to share it and talk about it. And this is like something a therapist might say, but, uh, uh, beyond that, like, you know, if, if, if you tell her that immediately and, and, or, or, at some point when you feel comfortable like two months in and she's like oh i don't want to deal with this then who the fuck is she anyway you know what i mean then she wasn't the right person yeah again you know nimesh and i aren't professionals this is something that i would hope you would reach out to professional about because these are heavy things i mean you did you know just as 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 a person hearing this email nimesh you kind of hit on it a little bit too his His dressing of the situation doesn't match how I would dress the situation. Right. Like, he says, when do I tell her about my fucked up family situation? To me, your family is not fucked up. No. Like, this is a tragic, sad thing that is a part of your past, but you're you're finding a way to, like, venture through emotionally. So, I, I mean, I don't think anyone would look at you and go, oh, your family's fucked up. They would go... Oh my God, I'm so sorry that you've dealt with that type of pain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the, that's part of what a professional can help you through, like putting these things in perspective and figuring out, you know, how to relate to them in your everyday life. Like that's, that's reason enough to go and seek out therapy and, and to seek out someone that's not the J train podcast, even though I appreciate sending the email here. I think also, I do understand you wouldn't tell everyone you go on a date with that this is a part of your past. It's not a first date conversation. (laughs) No, and and all, yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. Um, Everyone's dead. Uh, You know, like I don't know how to, you know, not to make light. But I would say to this person that you understand that you said I don't want to bring this up, but then you're saying I met this girl. And every time I see a text from them, um, I, I get a smile on my face. Okay, that is the signal that you're ready to you, you you again, I understand like needing the the you have to trust someone to bring these things to them. 
how long have they is this like they're dating i don't recall if they're dating or if they're in a serious relationship i don't think they're in a serious relationship right he just said uh i'm started seeing this girl so oh, okay. I, I i think like but i think you're i can't tell this guy how to feel he does feel just by emailing us yeah he feels i'm ready to trust this person right. with more information than i would trust maybe someone i've gone a first date with and i think that's great Mm -hmm. I think the moment you feel it is the moment you say it. And right. I, and also, I think he needs to get out of his head. And again, a professional would could help him give him the tools to get away from this. Yeah. He writes in his email, I hate the thought of anyone treating me differently than anyone else just because of my past. Mm -hmm. We've all got our demons and I don't want mine to define me or how people treat me. Well, dude, you can't, you can't really... Force Count on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people are gonna treat you how they treat you, but also like uh, uh, talking about it with whoever you're dating, whatever you know you're thinking of, will help you and her f understand why you may behave some ways in certain situations. Like, yeah, I know, I know. In my life, something that I had affect me growing up definitely affects how I behave now. And that's, I mean, totally. I was, I was uh, able to discover that on my own, but, you know, a therapist pointed out the same thing, you know, years after it happened, years after I discovered it on my own. And uh, so all that to say, like, it may be worth going to see someone anyway, um, and also talking about it in the first place with, A, your little brother, your stepmom, your other family, and, and this girl that you're talking about may help you understand why you behave some way that you don't really know right now like i would it, i would hate leaving my girl someplace like if i was my my what not wife but if i was mm -hmm. like we were at a party together um and i had to leave or she had to leave i would or i couldn't go or she couldn't go i would always feel bad but that's just i trick i was like why do i feel bad that that happened why do i work to correct that or get annoyed when that happens i trace it back to you know some childhood shit and like that just yeah. helps you process it. And it, it, you know what? It helps you get to know someone like, yeah. listen, we can't promise you that she's going to react the way you want her to react to this information. Mm -hmm. But you, we can say to you, however you feel about that will inform your decision to get more serious with this person. Yeah. You, you know, so these are kind of the, you know, these are the pitfalls and traps of life. This is the pitfalls and traps of getting to know someone that sometimes people disappoint you. And sometimes people rise up to the moment and yeah. are, are good for it. So, but I think this is, it's two, it's, it's two things. Bring, you know, uh, trusting someone to receive it well and be a good partner to you while knowing this information. Mm -hmm. And two, it's like, you know, we've all got our demons. To me, this isn't a demon. This is yeah. just your life. Like, yeah. I, I think you have to come to terms with that you've had tragedy, but also how you view that tragedy. And I, I think that only comes with a professional and, you know, working on it. That's yeah. that. These are these don't. Nobody's good at these things. Nobody. I'll tell you who's not going to solve it. Nimesh Patel and Jerry Free. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, Hopefully, hopefully just reading. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we helped a little just by reading the email. J Train Podcast at gmail .com, J Train Podcast at gmail .com. Here with Nimesh Patel at Finding Nimesh on Twitter and Instagram. Patel twenty twenty. All the YouTube stuff. Go go go. Let's do two more emails. We're gonna do Let's a do female email, emails. and then I'm gonna forward you an email with an attachment. Okay. Jared, I'm living with my boyfriend of 10 months. Things are going great. Tonight, after having a lot of wine, my boyfriend passed out, and I decided to snoop through his phone. I want to be clear. I didn't suspect anything. I truly trust him, but I was curious to know what he thought of me. Um, okay. Ready? Uh, I want to be clear. I don't suspect anything. Let me, let me go back because I was reading ahead a little bit to make sure I hadn't already done this email. Tonight, after having a lot of wine, my boyfriend passed out and decided to snoop through his phone. I want to be clear. I, didn't, I don't suspect anything and I fully trust him, but I was curious to know what he thought of me in the be beginning of our relationship since we had kind of spoken about it earlier that night. Ooh, this is only trouble, right? Ooh, I mean, I'm, in I, the beginning, will, I, I will respond in my, one of my voiceover voices. Well, well, Nimesh, wouldn't you say that the text you wrote about your now wife in the first month of your relationship, you wouldn't want her reading 
Oh, no, no. I've long since destroyed that phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this seems like a problem that you're oh. going to have. Also, I, very clearly, you don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I, scro- <laughs> I scrolled back to the beginning of the convo with him and his closest friend back to December, January, when we started dating. I found out that in our second month of dating, he had met some other girl and was debating with his friend if he should go after her or stay with me. One of the things he said was that he was starting to get bored of the sex. I know I shouldn't have looked, but now there is nothing I can do. I feel like shit, even though we moved in together and really all is well. Do I bring this up to him? I'm just worried that he is still bored with the sex. Not sure if uh, he was just saying this as an excuse to go after someone else, but it still feels bad. Any advice appreciated. Thank you for all you do. So, Nimesh, this is a twofold problem. One, she looked through the phone. Um, and two, she found out he was like bored with her sex, but then stayed with her. And now she has this sex thing in her head. What do you think? Um, I think all of these are uh, good, quick solves. Okay. One, he's not going to care that you went through his phone because you found something that may, I mean, he might care, but he will most likely try to address the sex thing first. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he'll say, but baby, it's fine now. I love fucking you. And then, you know, you just go on some websites, find some toys and <laughs> ways to spice it up. And, and that's really it. Well, yeah, I think that's I think, huh? I, 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 I think you have to admit to him that you look through the phone. Yeah, 100 percent. I think you have to go to him and go, I made a fucked up mistake. Um, and also he had a right two months in to text with a friend. I don't know if you had a right to talk about your sex life. That seems a little I would be a, a little bit upset about that. Mm-hmm. But to text with a friend, hey, I've been seeing this girl, but I'm not sure what if I'm going to stay or go. That's a pretty normal text, right? Yeah. That seems Maybe minus standard. the – I, I'm sure if he could go back, he would not have said the sex stuff. They're, they're together how long? Now 10 months, and they live together now. They live together already, and it's been 10 months. And into the, the second month into dating? Second month into dating. Uh. I guess they're still seeing other people at that point. Now they've been yeah. steady for 10 months. That's the assumption. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it's like that's a tip. That's a standard kind of uh, thing that happens. We're like, ah, do I really want to see this person? And then totally look, don't forget where you're at now. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying like, just put a figure. If, up his butt. if you talk <laughs> to him, if you talk to him about it, you have to first say, I fucked up. That's something I'm not going to do again. The mm-hmm. conversation we had led me to thinking, wondering, and I looked through your phone. I hope you can forgive me. Maybe he won't forgive you. He might look at you and go, well, I can't trust you again. But that's you. Would, let's hope that doesn't happen. Right. Hey, I do care about you, and I am worried about the sex stuff. Let's talk about it. What can I do more? Now it's now you're into what can we do more of? What would you like to do? What, here's what I fantasize about. Here's my thumb. Let me wear you like a finger puppet. You know, like there are ways, but I think it starts at. I Let saw me wear what I you saw. Like a finger puppet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you gotta start. You gotta start at apology and acceptance that these things happen in the beginning of a relationship. These discussions mm-hmm. happen. Then it becomes. Well, are you still bored of the sex? Is there ways we can spice things up? Here's what I fan. I think it always makes it easier when you say, I fantasize about blank and blank to get someone else to be a little bit more vulnerable to tell you what they fantasize about because you're bringing this conversation to him. He moved in with you. So obviously the sex wasn't that boring. Right. You know, obviously the connection was greater and worth investing in more than, you know, maybe standardized sex. Just next time he's coming home, go to Pornhub.com and <laughs> Chromecast to the screen. And then oh. they, <laughs> look what I found. You I know, guess we're not watching football tonight. Nope. Nope. Just some wild fucking pornography. We are sponsored people. The J Train Podcast is brought to you by Quip, Quip, Quip. When is the last time you got rewarded for brushing your teeth? Back when a lolly and a sticker made your week? Listen, I'm telling you right now, the Quip 
what they what Quip is doing with a toothbrush is unbelievable because they've gamified the process. They've made brushing your teeth pay you back. With Quip's new smart electric toothbrush, good habits will actually reward you with more than just a great smile. I use it. I love it. I keep track it on my phone. It, the Quip app has entered into my little app dance that I do when it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, email. Now it's Quip. And listen, I, t- I talk about how I love flying Delta and, and now I'm loving using Quip for the same reason because I get to count my points and see how I'm doing and see how my brush strokes are going. Quip will give you, so it, look at, they, and it's this new smart brush Good, and they reward you with more than just a great smile. Quip will give you free products, gift cards, and more just for brushing your teeth. The new Quip smart brush tracks how well you brush and gives you points for brushing uh, for brushing that you can't ca- that you can cash in for real rewards. This is great. They've turned a chore to a game that gets you free stuff. If you already have a Quip, you can upgrade your current model with a smart motor. It's the same Quip you know and love. Sensitive vibrations, two-minute timer, and that slim, sleek design that just classes up you, the bathroom sink. And now the smart brush uses Bluetooth to track your brushing and reward you for it. It's not just brushes. Quip also has watermelon toothpaste, an eco-friendly solar battery charger, so you can charge this puppy with the sun's rays. Plus, get new brush heads and floss refills for just five bucks and shipping's free. Join over five million happy customers. Save hundreds compared to other Bluetooth brushes when you get a Quip Smart Brush for just forty-five dollars. Start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today. To go to getquip.com/jtrain right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com/jtrain. That's G-E-T. Q-U-I-P dot com slash J Train. Quip, better oral health made simple and rewarding. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Here with Nimesh Patel. Patel 2020. Go, go, go. I just forwarded you an email. Okay. And we're going to do one more email. It's got screenshots. We love a screenshot email. Um, I haven't received it yet. You should have gotten it. You got it? Oh, oh there it is. Making okay. friends in a new city gone wrong. It's called Making Friends in a New City Gone Wrong. So this oh, is wait. a, I think it's more of a lifestyle email than a dating question. You ready? Uh-huh. Jared, back in July, I moved to a new city for work and didn't know anyone. So I started hanging out with some of my coworkers outside of work. One of them Mason and I hit it off and started grabbing beers, playing tennis and watching sports together. About a month ago, I backed out of a half marathon that we said we were going to be both run basically because I'm not in great running shape and didn't feel like training for it. When I told him, he called it a shitty excuse and started being really weird about hanging out with me and a couple friends from work. My question is, why would someone send what he sent at the end and still expect to be friends with them? Uh, uh, be after him being so and still expect to be friends after him being so weird i understand people have differences but it struck me as weird to not want to hang out with someone just because they didn't go don't go to church as much as you or the same religion also right now we're all working from home how do i deal with seeing this guy once i'm back in the office thanks for the advice love the podcast and all the other stuff you do keep killing it so let's read the text yeah oh, well, i read him well, let me i'm going to start from the beginning i'll be him you be the guy writing in, you be blue, I'll be gray. I'll be the I'll be the asshole in question. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Bro, we good? <laughs> yeah, what <laughs> this is so dude. It's so dude right away. Bro, we good? Yeah. Okay, so he said no to the running thing and then the guy got weird. Okay, go ahead. Bro, we good? Yeah, why are you asking? Just been looking to hang out. It's been a minute or fall or, or falling out. I don't know. Always no response when something comes up. Like two weekends ago, you said you were coming to Noda. Then you met up with Zach after a haircut to watch the games. Been basically weird ignoring me. Like, I don't know, man. That's not true. I went to get a haircut. Then I went to the park. I watched the game with Zach this past weekend. Also, I am not ignoring you. Just not going out of my way to hang with you. What do you mean by not going out of your way to hang out with me? Sorry I didn't respond earlier, Miles, but I was driving to Knoxville and have been with my family. I'm not saying I don't want to be friends with you, but there are other people I've decided to pursue and being friends with. 
ever since you bailed on that 15K or whatever, I realize we have some pretty significant differences. And truthfully, I want to spend time with people who believe Jesus and Christianity like I do. Oy, oh, my God. Definitely wouldn't mind getting a beer on the weekend every once in a while. And we will definitely spend a lot more time at work together. But I hope that explains why I've been more standoffish. I know you'll understand, bro. I should have been more straightforward sooner. Wow. This is. Miles and Mason, you were meant to be. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry for us laughing. and But this guy, I mean. The person who emailed in, he should feel lucky. Yeah. Like he wrote, he goes, why should Jesus? <laughs> like my question is, why would someone send that at the end and still expect to be friends after? Well, this guy's obviously got hey, his. <laughs> well, <laughs> something's going on. Well, even the way he responded, it, it feels like the way he deals with his friendships is very organized. It feels like it's like he doesn't really have real friends. He has appointments. Mm -hmm. He's got and, church friends and work friends and his like Saturday drinking friends. Yeah. Well, I mean, even Saturday drinking friends, it just sounds like this guy has friends that are a means to an end to him. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't do the 15 K with me. So I will not be held back by someone who doesn't want to train for the race. And it's like, Okay, dude, like I'm just trying to like be a human and do my own thing. Like, <laughs> right? I wouldn't want to be friends with this guy. And I think when you go back no to work. Way. I'm not but, friends with anybody that's going to run a 15K. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. where it stops. <laughs> never, never mind Christianity and Jesus. The 15K keep, is where yeah. you lost us. You can keep your Jesus. Sunday morning, I'm hungover. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think people who organize their life like this, like this guy's got like, listen, nothing. I think you can love your religion and love Jesus and also have great friendships. But when you fashion your friendships to, I will not be presented with differences of opinion on training and Jesus. And it's like, oh, dude, you're just afraid of hearing from someone else or having people that you in your life that you don't respect anyone that doesn't do life the way you do life and that won't be servicing you on your road through life. And I would, I think it's okay to be like, all right, we're not friends. This is not a friendship. Um, it's okay for this guy to go. Yeah. I'm not going to hang out with him yeah. the next time he reaches out. That's okay. And when you go to work, you be pleasant and that's it. That's it. And then every now and then uh, just say, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine someone? I, I mean, and also, this is a lesson to anyone who's like feels weirdness over text and feels weird bringing that up. You are right. When you feel weirdness over text, you're not wrong 99% of the time. Yeah. Like It's really this guy hard to communicate emotion or feel over text. So if you do feel something, you're probably right about it. Absolutely. He's like always no response. Like I, I appreciate the emailer because he's being honest. He's like, hey, man. I'm getting a weird vibe. I moved to town. I got a few people that I reach out to. You're one of them. You're not answering. That's not true. When I get a haircut, then I went to the park and I watched a game with Zach. Like, like at that moment, the minute you go, that's not true and don't empathize with the person's position is the minute you are lying. Also, I'm not ignoring you. You, you just not going out of my way to hang with you. Like, what's the fuck does that mean? Not going out. And then it's like, here's the truth. You haven't prayed to Jesus enough. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe that was code for, uh, are you uh, are you one of the gays I, in, the, in the Christian community? You don't I have pray no to Jesus idea. enough. Mason's got a secret. What are you uh, running from, Mason? Uh, <laughs> he's TK running. Ain't gonna get you where you want to go. He's running from people that might make him feel badly about his own insecurities about his own lifestyle. Right. You know, like that. That's the thing. He's running from someone going. Yeah, I'm not going to go to church today. And he takes that as a judgment on him. So, dude, don't walk away. Run away from this. Be cordial and nice at the office. You don't have to, like, be his friend. You can just be a coworker. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You tried. You did nothing wrong. Get a giant Jesus piece. <laughs> like a Kanye West size Jesus piece. Just a huge one. Walk in <laughs> over your suit. Big necklace. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. J Train Podcast at gmail.com. Nimesh Patel, thank you for coming on. This is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we have fun. I appreciate it.
Always a blast. I need everyone to go to Nemesh's website, Patel2020, Patel2020, Patel2020.com. That's where you get all his YouTube. Zoo Idiots is the cartoon. It's coming out at Finding Nemesh on Twitter and Instagram. Always a pleasure, buddy. Good to see you. I am I'm Jared Freed. We're here Mondays and Thursdays. Keep spreading the word. Tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mama, a papa. We'll be back next episode. Boom. Don't forget to like the video you just watched. I have many more. Subscribe to the channel right now. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, you fool. There's even a bell you can click to. Now you've got your week set Monday through Friday. I'm here for you.